Hey everyone, Vortex here, and today I'm going to be theorizing about Tetris' mother, the fearsome pirate captain who appears to have a hidden past, linked with the old king of Hyrule. After the kingdom of Hyrule was buried beneath the waves, the royal bloodline was kept intact through secrecy and careful movement across the Great Sea. Since enough time passed between the Great Flood and the Wind Waker, enough for the legends to be distorted heavily, we can assume at least 150 years have passed, so around 5 to 6 generations. One generation is usually around 30 years. After the Great Flood, Hyrule's monarchy broke into pieces and slowly dissolved into legend. However, the descendants of the royal servants still remember Hyrule as the kingdom of old and the princess they once served. The guise of the pirate was chosen for its misleading nature. No one would willingly chase the pirates across the sea, as nothing could be gained from doing so. The pirates would come and go, living off stolen goods and following rumors. The true identity of the remaining bloodline of Hylia would be spared and able to move onwards. Until that day would come that Hyrule would be retaken or lost forever. As tradition dictated, all girls born within the royal family were given the name Zelda. This includes Tetra and her mother. A picture of Tetra's mother can be seen in Tetra's personal quarters. A young brown-haired woman with short hair, very unlike a princess. But this woman was known as the Princess Zelda, albeit unofficially. The pirates treat Tetra with utmost respect despite her young age and short stature. They had been entrusted with protecting the royal lineage, to preserve it until destiny called. While they were aware of Tetra's situation, they kept it hidden from her by orders of their late captain. However, Tetra does not like it when she is referred to by her true name. While she knows her past and therefore the implications of destiny, she clings on to the false name that was given to her by her mother. Her name is one of the few remaining things that remind Tetra of the short life they had together. Tetra's mother was likely going to tell her daughter of her royal descent, much like how her mother and grandmother had done before her, but she passed away before she had a chance. This could have been a coming-of-age ritual, seeing as Tetra is still a child. Tetra's mother, despite dying young, still made sure to instill parts of her wisdom before she died unexpectedly. Seeing as Tetra does not appear to mention her late mother, nor do the pirates talk about it like it was a recent event, it seems likely that Tetra's mother passed away two to three years before the events of the Wind Waker. Before she passed, she explained to Tetra how one day there would be a hero who would take her back to the kingdom of old, a kingdom beneath the waves. Tetra would recognize this hero based on his green garb and the sword on his back. Her mother did not mention Tetra's royalty, nor the function of the Triforce of Wisdom that she entrusted to her. This was to ensure her safety. If Tetra knew she was of royal descent, she might become a target. This is why Tetra is bewildered at you carrying the Master Sword, a sword she should not be able to recognize, let alone understand its purpose. Tetra realizes at this moment that this was all part of the tale told by her mother, a tale that will lead to her destiny. Tetra's suspicions at the start of the Wind Waker were confirmed. The green-garbed boy was not simply a child looking for his sister, he was the hero. The only clues that Tetra's mother left behind can be found within Tetra's personal quarters. Various paintings and charts depict knowledge regarding the keys to entering the Lost Kingdom. The chart depicts the three pearl locations and the location of the physical entrance to Hyrule. None of this knowledge should have been known to anyone. Unless this information was passed down by people who had witnessed the Flood. Since Tetra does not possess this knowledge herself, or appears aware of what the charts and paintings mean, it seems more likely that Tetra's mother is responsible for the decorations. These are the final clues she left behind for her daughter, so that one day she may use them. Tetra's mother was aware of her daughter's fate long before anyone else was. How? She was instructed by her ancestor, the King of Hyrule. As Ganondorf planned to escape from the seal, the king's spirit slowly began to awaken from his eternal slumber. He, much like the Chosen Ones, was bound to Ganondorf's curse. Through the Gossip Stones, or Pirate Charm as it's known in the game, he contacted his great-great-granddaughter, a Princess Zelda masquerading as a pirate, and told her of the destiny that would soon call towards her only daughter, Tetra. Unfortunately, not too long after transcribing the clues provided by the king, Tetra's mother passed away. How long is in between her passing and the Wind Waker is unknown, but judging from remarks given by the pirates, they mentioned that Tetra was still young. 
However, as shown in The Wind Waker, Tetra is young regardless, around 12 years old. It could be a matter of maturity they're talking about. Tetra was forced to grow up fast and adjust to her new role as captain of a small crew. A few years passed since then and Ganondorf managed to finally circumvent the seal. The King of Hyrule was sent to the surface by the goddesses to find those who were connected to the Hero of Legend and the Princess of Destiny. While the king was aware of the identity of the princess, he could not find a way to approach her about her destiny. He did however know that he would be able to reveal her past to her if he guided the boy clothed in green. 